Okay, here we're saying that this uh, component requires a joint teardown. Field service rep can attach a digital photo, and then now he has an argument to his warranty case on a digital photo. But I like the flip side of this. Customer engineering can say, hey, here's a photo. Watch out for these types of failures, or this is what you should look at. So we can, on the other hand, send their field rep a digital photo. Now, at this point, uh, customer needs his replacement part. Okay? Over here we have, his, thank you, replacement part. You put your material number in that you're going to place the order. Okay? Email. Nothing's in our email. Customer service is sitting at their desk or they're out doing their job. They come back to their desk. Jason, if we submit this order, um. order submitted. This is all real time. It's going in and placing the order in SAP. It's coming over here and alerting that there's an alert to this part. Um. Customer service gets it in their queue. There's penalty conditions that apply. Please expedite the sales order immediately. My favorite part, click on that hyperlink. Um. Don't even have to go into another session. My sales order, start expediting. All right, a large wow. <laughs> Here you can have a wireless PDA, process your warranty, go back to your desk, upload it into the system, and still get the same effects that we have here. Wow. <laughs> he needs a little Two up too. there for he that. <laughs> this is more for Mike Smith. Mike, we have about 15% of the warranty dollars equal to about 85% of the warranty volume, you know, the, the, the real big money is in the, is in the significant few. And those materials that are basically in that population, plus material that we don't have unit exchange equivalents for that are on the new side, when you add all that together, that's about 30% of the warranty budget, roughly $7 million. We want an IT solution to mine information out of there. But it's kind of a random opportunity that we find a unit exchange equivalent part number need as opposed to something that is simply mined through data. So we know that we know this. We have a, a seven million dollar lake of, of basic mud and in there there's some diamonds and we only find those diamonds when we're lucky. If we had something that queried our database on a daily basis that simply looked and looked and looked and sorted and sorted and sorted, we think we'd find those more. And if we did a poor job we'd find 5% opportunity in that $7 million, that's $350,000. So it's a value-added tool, and it's an IT solution, and it's things we think we can do. We've talked about these things. So have we looked at how we can provide our customer better and improved services and provide a manner in, to execute them so it's not just words but action alone? I would say yes. Have we provide a way of being more efficient in the way we do things so that we don't have to wait from one department to another, but enable and empower all departments? Not just think about internal departments, but information we can also send to our supplier and let them know what's going on now. Send to our distributors and dealers and let them know what's going on. I would say the answer is yes. And the last thing is, can we be more proactive now? with the information that we can generate, with the information that our reliability group can do, there is a whole new level of benefits that we haven't even discussed today and how we can better provide engineered parts um, and be more proactive on that side. So with that, I would like to hand it back to Dr. Donovan. Before I do, I do want to thank you, the entire team here, Jason, Kat, Akil, Gatansu, and Jim Dan up there. <laughs> And of course, Dr. If we can solve a set of problems that real people have every day in their business and make our business serve the customer better, that, that, those, are, those are wows that you can't put on the board over there. Those are, those are places that our business began. It's the places that, that we need to go and find more of those because those will integrate together as soon as people believe that they can make things better. As soon as you guys all go back to LaGrange and we, and we work real hard not to crush your enthusiasm with, some, with something we do in the next 20 minutes here or something, uh, you'll, you'll, all, you'll all have so many seeds to cast in, into other things that are frustrating and ridiculous and 
wasteful and, und and, and don't make any sense, but we've just been doing them that way, or we've automated doing them that way, that, uh, that I just think this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, we've dropped a pebble in the, in the still lake, and these rings are going to go uh, miles before we're done. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. No, I think it's, it's kind of fun to, to, to watch a team work like this over a course of a week. We've gone through, actually we're, we're just beginning the fourth phase of a SAP implementation. You, you, you go from implementation to the crisis mode, then the crisis mode you know, to the stabilization mode. You know, finally, after a year of a lot of pain and suffering and, 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 and blood, uh, we're now beginning to take advantage of you know, the optimization of SAP. So it's good that we have that base and we have you know, the collection of a lot of the data, and now the fun becomes how do you go use it? And how do you go you know, present that to the business in a way that makes sense to them so that they can make uh, more timely and better decisions uh, to help our customers and help our bottom line? So clearly we're to that point. 